Hey, what's up beautiful people? The most beautiful people on this planet, that is. Now, I decided to step away from all of these crazy rants and debates and talk about something a little bit more calmly. And uh, I thought, why don't we actually bring up the topic we haven't truly had a time to discuss properly. So, we see this study here from 2015, uh, I presume it's uh, Banks et al. And 2015. And uh, it says, why do animal eyes have pupils of different shapes? And I think that's a very good question. Although it's done, uh, sampling is obviously going to be done on the modern animals that are alive today, since there's no way to figure this out for sure in certain animal groups that are no longer alive today and don't have any direct relatives in that sort of sense to reliably test this theory. But we will give it a try later. We'll just give a few uh, briefs... Uh, scheme through so we can see that they are uh, splitting this into multiple parts where we see the how they look at certain aspects of it which is quite cool they produce some results we got some figures there as well like um, for example we open this one up there's more figures there there's a variety of data here as well that i you know some of which I understand, but a lot of it I don't. <laughs> but we will obviously cover, for the video purpose, we'll cover those that I actually do understand and can somewhat, you know, determine what's going on. Otherwise, feel free to just look through the paper when you are, uh, after you watch the video and just give it a read. I think it's going to be a good one. And just do another quick figure here. So we see like that quite interesting stuff, lots of cool diagrams, many of which I once again don't truly really understand what that means. <laughs> so you see all of these kind of different... Um, yeah, they've specifically picked Canida and Felida. Hey, interesting, nice. Now, let's uh, let's actually just go in here and um, uh, as I said, I would, I would probably say, guys, give it a read, maybe, and we can come back to the video again. Uh, if you want, just pause the video, give it a read, and maybe come back after that. So, now that you have read the paper, I presume, uh, you can unpause the video, and let's open this first figure. The reason why I decided to open this table is because it gives us sort of a spectrum of different um, pupil shapes, starting from the top to the bottom, we have vertical, subcircular, circular, and horizontal. And now we have the pupil shape on the left-hand side, and foraging mode, down the bottom, and uh, the table uh, tells us basically uh, where do we find mo you know so specific type of groups based on also what time of the day are they um, active, so to speak. So we have herbivorous animals, and then we have active uh, predators, and we have ambush predators. And I presume, of course, sometimes we'll find something that's a little bit in between, so, you know, Generally, I presume that they are characterized based on the most uh, common and dominant uh, lifestyle in their hunting activities rather than uh, whether or not they're only that particular lifestyle, because sometimes they transition. Just like you cannot always exclusively uh, e exclude the idea that even active predators can be scavengers, which means that they're still not going to be scavengers full stop. It just means that they will scavenge opportunistically or whatever. Does that make sense? Now, with all with, with this stuff here, I would want to take this to the next level and say how do we apply this uh, table with this information, however basic it is, but it's easy to understand, at least from this table right here in the center, that not the one on the right, because that's got a lot of numbers, I'm allergic to numbers, but the one that's on the left of it, right? So basically, this one right here, sorry about the pop-up. and. Um, how do we apply this now to dinosaurs? I would suggest uh, we try to think of... Well, let's take some of the groups first. So we have um, herbivorous, which we know fit within the sauropodomorphs, ceratopsia, uh, theriophora, and um, we have ornithopoda and a variety of others that are basically herbivorous. And, interestingly enough, we also have some of the herbivorous theropods. Omnivorous would be probably, I think omnivorous are mostly going to be restricted to theropods, but there are probably some other ones there and there, maybe among ceratopsids or maybe even among ornithopods that could be potentially omnivorous. 
and uh, of course we have the ambush which is basically the ambush predators which will definitely be if anywhere it will be found in the carnivorous theropods groups now here's very interesting thing so first let's try to see what we can determine or suggest um, I will suggest my view and you can suggest yours in the comments down below so here we go guys I would go for let's say Tyrannosaurids let's take Tyrannosaurus Rex and let's take maybe Albertosaurus and Elioramus whichever doesn't matter Altai or Remotus I don't care now Tyrannosaurus I have always thought of it as more of an ambush predator but occasionally active so I would definitely say from my point of view at least based on that premise I do not think it was an active pursuer like a chaser as such I think it would rely on maybe a group sort of tactic where maybe some of them would distract the prey item and the other one would just strike it from the ambush and uh, deliver you know the main killing blow and if not it will at very least be able to uh, pin the prey down so that the others can join in and start basically tearing it apart to bits and all that cool stuff. So, with that in mind, I would give Tyrannosaurus Rex if I were when if and when I'm gonna be making a model of T Rex and building a kit of it, it's gonna be either vertical or subcircular uh, shape of pupil and uh, whether or not it was polyphasic nocturnal or I don't think it was diurnal in that case. It would not be. I would probably suggest it was polyphasic, personally. I do not think it was nocturnal, but I don't know if there is a way to test that. I am going to suggest that it was a polyphasic, but that's a, literally like poking in the sky. So if you want to suggest something else, maybe you want to suggest circular and say it was diurnal so in circular shape, that's perfectly fine as well, I guess. But this was my personal choice. Now, my personal choice for Alio Ramos um, would be active and circular. Uh, reason for that, um, and uh, and probably I would I would probably say diurnal or polyphasic, not nocturnal. More likely diurnal and polyphasic. For me personally, the way I see it is that it would probably be a fast runner. It's very lightly built. Despite the fact, of course, that we only... I mean, we do have a Pinocchio Rex, which also shows to be quite lightly built. It's not... I mean, it's... I think it's an older animal than any of the known uh, Elioramus uh, specimens that are found, which are usually... I think they're either... I think they're sub-adult specimens. But I think the uh, Pinocchio Rex or Quiangesaurus or whatever from China was... Um, uh, I think it was either... a young adult or like but it was definitely not a sub i don't think it was a sub correct me if i'm wrong if it was a sub then of course we it's a bit tricky here because we have to see what the animal would look like when it grows up but i suspect it would be somewhat in some way or form similar to an adult albertosaurian in that sense it would not gain too much mass in my opinion in that sense and it would be built to be able to actually chase something so it would be an active predator so i would give it circular now to Albertosaurus, uh, I personally think that Albertosaurians were indeed more likely to be active predators. In which case, I would give them also circular uh, type of pupils. So there we go. So we have either Tyrannosaurus Rex and Tarbosaurus and, and Daspletosaurus, maybe Juchang Tyrannus as well. I would give those um, maybe either vertical or subcircular. And I would give circular to the uh, uh, smaller ones that are probably going to be more built for being active pursuers, like uh, the Albertosaurians and uh, Alio Ramini. Maybe even Lithronax as well might have been more of a pursuer rather than ambush, but maybe it was an ambush, in which case it would be more akin to the T-Rex or bed. There's another one that starts with a B and I can never pronounce it. So you know which one I told, I'm talking about. It's the one from the Kirtland Formation. Okay, that one. So, I have no clue what Nanungsaurus would be because we only have a part of the skull and not even a big one either in terms of the coverage and material. So, can't comment on that, unfortunately. And, uh, yeah, I guess that's it for that. Now, many Raptorans, I would probably say, uh, more likely I would stick with Circular with maybe a few minor exceptions. But uh, I would probably say the herbivorous 
money wrap torrents, I would likely give them circular. More leaning towards circular, based on the premise of relationship to the modern avians, because they are the closest related to them. And, uh, I mean, there's no other group that is as closely related to them as the other ones are, because technically, aves are basically direct uh, descendants of the money raptorans. So, and that's technically what they are as well, in a sense. Now, I might consider giving a subcircular to something like a Utahraptor, maybe just uh, because I would think it's probably an active predator. It could be ambush, in which case I could give consider it given a vertical. So, you could probably see something similar to like a Jurassic Park, for example, Velo uh, not Velociraptor, Jurassic Park Raptor, but with feathers, basically, aka Utahraptor. But, um, to kind of... Uh, Sorry about that small tangent, but to kind of really bring it back to what I'm uh, what I'm all about here I think the vast majority of minor raptorans I would tell take them whether herbivorous or carnivorous probably gonna be circular and Whether or not they're gonna be polyphasic nocturnal or diurnal. I'm still struggling to really pick a side here now herbivores, uh, yeah, that's gonna be a tricky one because um, there will probably vary among, definitely gonna be something either circular or horizontal, depending on maybe specific uh, groups or family groups and stuff like that. I painted my um, two of my ceratopsids, which are not my models, they're models from Candid Sculpts by, made by Mike, and uh, I will actually po do a video on them soon as well. And uh, there are Pachyrhinosaurus lacustae and Nasudoceratops titusi, and uh, I uh, painted both as having the horizontally slit uh, type of pupils, but some of you might probably think that the round um, circular basically shapes are more suitable for them. So I would definitely say it's either this one or the other one that, that way. That's how I would do. For sauropods, I don't know why, but I'm somehow more leaning towards the circular shape. But I don't really know why, but somehow it feels right, <laughs> which is something that we don't usually do on this channel, you know, we don't use feelings, we try to use facts, but we don't have any facts in regards to what dinosaur eyes look like, so we just have to go with what we think is right and try to find the most reasonable explanation why that is. Okay, so with that in mind, I hope you enjoyed the video, and let me know what you think of the paper, let me know how you would personally reconstruct your dinosaurs, uh, whether it's for the artwork or if you are going to be building kits and painting them yourself, and etc, etc, and all that lovely, jubbly jazz. Now, those of you who are new to the channel, please make sure you hit the like, subscribe, and share this video, and await for the next one. Ciao!